Welcome to part 72 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, we'll be continuing on from the last video in which we animated a walk cycle on a very simple stick person character. Let's go ahead and check out that walk cycle that we made in the last video. I'll press Alt A, of course, to play. And as you can see, this little guy is walking like he's walking on a treadmill, staying in one spot because we don't want to have him walking forward because the purpose of this is that we can actually make him walk as many times or for as long as we want. And we can actually specify a path for him to walk on or just a distance from A to B and we can have him uh, take the appropriate number of steps for that distance. So in this video, we're going to do a couple things. We'll do an animation from point A to point B, a distance, and we'll match the footsteps nicely to that distance. We'll also constrain his walk to a path so he can walk up and down hills and follow a path uh, very quite precisely. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'll press escape to stop that animation. We actually made a few problems uh, in the last video concerning the keyframes of our animation. Uh, the first one is that we did not change our interpolation type of the keyframes. All keyframes have an interpolation type. If I go down, I'll actually select all the keyframes. They already were. They're already yellow. I can press A a few times to select them all. If I go down to key and then interpolation mode on the header of the dope sheet, um, you can see that uh, by default, actually you can't tell it's default, but the default interpolation is Bezier and we want linear. And what that means is for us is that when he first starts walking, he won't uh, start slow and then speed up. It'll be a constant uh, linear speed all the way through. In other words, we don't want him to, to slow down at the end either, which it would do a little bit by default. So I'm going to select all the keyframes, press T to bring that same keyframe interpolation little pop-up window up, and I'll select linear, and that might shuffle things around just a little bit. If I play it now, you might not be able to tell much of a difference, um, but trust me, it'll loop better with uh, linear interpolation on all your keyframes. Now, in order to make our little guy here walk uh, for more than just these two steps, um, what I need to do here is I have to make another window on my screen, so I can actually make this one a little bit shorter. I'll grab this top here, I'll left click and drag this little triangle area straight down to divide the 3D viewport into two windows. And I'll change this window into a MLA editor window. I don't believe I've talked about this window very much, uh, if at all, in this whole tutorial series yet. Uh, but I do have a very old video on using the MLA editor to combine animations together. That's in my old Blender 2.6 tutorial series. I'll put a link to that video on the screen right now in a card. Um, if I bring up the NLA editor window, it looks a lot like the dope sheet in some ways. Um, I can kind of scrub through. I have a playhead. I have a, like, basically a timeline or keyframe markers. But what I can do here is take the animation that's currently on the character and kind of bake it. That's not really the right word, but what is it called? It's pushing the action down onto the top of the NLA stack as a strip. So you can basically make an animation, which is called an action in Blender, into an, an action strip, kind of like in a video editor, um, that you can add different animations together uh, to form one longer animation or even stack animations one on top of another to kind of change the animation in layers. The way you do that is, well, I'm going to click this little button. Before I do that, though, I'm going to name this animation called an action. So I'm going to go to the, uh, not the dope sheet, uh, it's still a dope sheet window, but I'll change the mode here to the action editor window. It's kind of a sub mode of the dope sheet window. And as you can see here, this action is called just armature action. I don't like that. I'm going to call it walk. And uh, just in case things go wrong, I'm going to click on this little F. And that means that um, even if I press this X to get rid of the walk from my little guy, I don't plan on doing that. But in case I do, the walk action here will have a fake user. That's what that little F stands for. And this little two means that now that um, this walk action is on two things, the armature of my guy and a fake user. Okay. So now we have an action called walk and that's our only action in the file. And what I can do now is right here next to walk, I'll press this little uh, push action down onto the top of the NLA stack as a new strip button. And what that does is basically takes the action and it makes it into a strip. And that's good because with a strip, we can do a lot of fancy things. And uh, those fancy things are over here in the side panel, the properties panel of this um, 
NLA editor window. Uh, if I select by right clicking that strip, I can find the section that is called scale and repeat. And I'm gonna play with these two things. If you thought my walk cycle was too slow, and yes, it's a very slow, almost slow motion walk cycle, what I can do here is I can change the scale here. So if I click on there and type 0.5, it'll be twice as short or twice as fast. Great. If I want to make my animation loop for longer, I can just change this repeat value. I can kind of click on there and drag. If I hold uh, shift before I start clicking and dragging, it let me kind of loop it or repeat it uh, more precisely. If I hold control, I believe in there, or is it alt? It'll uh, go much faster, I think, or something like that. Let's just go ahead and uh, type five there. And if I scroll down and zoom out, you can see now my guy continues to walk for a long time. So that's one of the benefits of this NLA editor window is that we can play around with these two playback setting um, numbers in the properties panel of this window. The other powerful thing, the more powerful thing is that we can actually stack animations one on top of another. Um, so I'm gonna grab the parent bone, whoops, grab the parent bone or the master bone that's uh, of this armature. I did this on purpose. That's right on the ground uh, that my guy is walking on. It's actually the parent of the entire uh, armature. So I can grab that one bone in pose mode. It'll move the entire thing around. Uh, I did that on purposely. Of course, if you don't have that in your character, you can go ahead and add that bone later. Just make sure that the bone does not deform the mesh. It doesn't pull or push any vertices. Okay, let's go ahead back to frame zero. I'm going to animate this block now. So I'm going to turn on my record button and I'll press I to insert a keyframe. Actually, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to move it over there. And so now I have a keyframe um, of that little block there. If I go later on to the end of that strip, essentially, and I move this down, well, what do I have? I've got an animation of my guy walking. Now, I don't necessarily know that he's taking the right number of steps. If I watch it, uh, what does it look like? Well, it looks like he's a little bit walking on ice. Um, and you'll notice that he's actually starting slow and kind of skating a bit more at the beginning and then he's getting some traction. That's because of that same interpolation mode. So I'm going to take these two keyframes, press T with them selected, and select linear. So now he'll move at a constant rate. And what we can see here now is that it doesn't look too bad, but something's a little bit wonky. And there's a couple things happening here, actually. One is that we don't have the right number of steps. The walk cycle is not the right speed for that particular distance of him walking. So maybe his walk needs to be a little bit faster or slower to match. Um, let's go ahead and see what that looks like. If I go to my side view again, and I'll put my 3D cursor right at the bottom or front at the bottom of his foot, uh, that's in the front, and I kind of scrub through, you'll see that by the time he picks up that foot, he has slid a little bit. And what that means is that it doesn't have enough of his walk cycles throughout the entire distance of him walking to fill the walking without him having to slide a little bit. So we actually need to shorten um, each one of the walk cycles a little bit and add a little bit more on the end. So what I can do is change the scale of my walk cycle. I'll hold control, actually shift rather on my keyboard and drag down in this window just a little bit. We'll see what happens. And so now if I look at that same 3D cursor and play it through, well, it's a little bit better. We have another problem here where the uh, foot is kind of sliding back and forth a little bit. We'll solve that in just a moment. Um, but it's looking not too bad, actually. I think I might hold shift and drag in this just a little bit more, maybe down to 0.4. Let's see how that looks. See, he's actually picking up his foot, um, and I think that's a bit too much, so I'm going to go back up to maybe 4.2. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me, but the time he picks up that foot, it's about in the same spot. Now, you'll notice that it does not look very good because the foot's sliding around uh, each time he plants his foot, it should just sort of stay planted. And the reason why that's happening is of my walk cycle. I didn't keep his foot moving at a constant rate, at least not the one that was planted on the ground. So I can actually, even though it's baked or 
pushed into a strip. I can still edit the animation that's in that. If I right click to select that strip and I press tab, that'll go into edit mode of that strip and I can get access to that uh, animation information or the keyframes down here. Now what's going on here is that the foot bone, if I select the foot and then press this little button here with the arrow on it, I can see only the keyframes on that selected object. So you can see if I, if I select different things, it'll give me a different uh, bone there. This foot does not need to have all these keyframes on it, especially since it's basically just sliding uh, backwards at that time, all the way from frame zero to frame um, 17. And the reason these three keyframes are there is because I was just posing the character um, in its four different poses before I started repeating itself. So I'm actually going to delete these three keyframes just on that foot that happens to be planted on the ground. And that will mean that, um, and I'll delete them, and that will mean that that foot will slide at a constant linear rate because all these keyframes again are set to a linear interpolation mode. So now that foot slides nice and consistently. Um, I want to keep these keyframes though because this is the pose of all those um, walking poses for the leg that's moving forward now up in the air. I need those keyframes there. But with the other foot selected, um, you can see the first keyframes are up in the air, so we want to keep those. But then these three last keyframes we want to get rid of, so I'll hold shift and right click and select those. X to delete those keyframes. Great. Our walk cycle is a lot smoother now. I might want to adjust things while I'm here, but I will uncheck that button. I'll go back into my NLA editor window, I'll press tab, and as you can see our feet are a lot more steadily planted on the ground and we're walking forward. That's awesome. If I want to continue editing my animation, I could even stop it, I could even uh, push this action down onto the stack of strips in the NLA editor, uh, but we're not going to do that. We're going to now constrain our walk to a path. So I'm actually going to get rid of the armature action if I can, or just delete the keyframes uh, down there and it goes away. That's what I want. I want to now create a path that my character is going to follow. So I'm going to press Shift S on my keyboard and say cursor to center. Uh, you can also press Shift C on your keyboard to do the same thing, but it kind of zooms your view out. And I'm going to press Shift A to bring up my add menu. I'm going to add a uh, curve and it's going to be a path. A path can actually define exactly what it sounds like. Um, it defines basically something or a line that's curved um, for something else to follow, uh, most likely. I actually made a video on following a path for things like uh, roller coaster cars or making a camera follow a path. So I'll put a link to that video on the screen right now up in the top right corner. I'm going to take this path and if I go into, pardon me, go into edit mode, you can see it has arrows. That's the direction. Uh, that the object will be following. So I'm actually going to scale that up and I'm going to rotate it. So I'll press R on the Z axis. So I'll type R then Z and then I'll type 90 uh, for 90 degrees on the Z axis. And so now I can press tab to go into edit mode. It has some points. They're kind of hard to see, but I know they're there. So we're doing pretty good. Let's go ahead and make this into a bit of a hill. I can select uh, any of these vertices if I select two. Uh, by holding shift, I can press W and select subdivide, and now I get more points. So I could make like a steeper hill here by adding in more points by subdividing. And I'll move that one to be like that. And maybe that one down, maybe I'll extrude, I'll tap E with that vertice selected, and I'll press Y to bring it out there. Let's go ahead also and take those vertices and move them like that. And be that one like that. Okay, let's not go uh, too crazy. I had this path that I want my character to walk on, and I have this random speed right now of him walking. Uh, I actually have uh, automatic keyframe insertion turned on, so I'll turn that off and delete that extra keyframe. I don't want that. In order to make my character follow the path, I'm going to take my armature and go back into object mode. And then I'm going to put the character in object mode, or the armature in object mode, right at the beginning of the path. So right there, 
uh, approximately and then I'll go to my top view and it looks pretty good. I'm next going to select the armature. I'll hold shift and I'll right click and select the path and I'm going to press control P now on my keyboard. Control B uh, brings up your set parent menu and I'm going to select follow path because the second object um, it was a path so it knows that that's sort of an option. So now if I um, scrub through my timeline, let's go ahead and zoom out here and go to our side view. All right, I had to pause the video there uh, because it's not acting quite as I expected it to, but I found out what the problem was. Um, it's not doing at all what it should be doing. It should be following the path nicely, but it's very much not. Uh, the reason why that's happening is because this um, kind of parent or master bone of the armature is not in its default pose location. You can see that with the armature selected, its origin is way over here and that's messing up our path constraint uh, deformation or following the path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this master bone and I'm going to press Alt G on my keyboard and that will put it back in its default location. And now what I want to do is go back into object mode and put my character at the beginning of the path. Make sure it's on uh, perfectly from all axes. So now I'll go back into pose mode and is there any keyframes anywhere? No, there are not. Oh, pardon me. I have my character walking in the wrong direction. If I go into edit mode of my path, I forgot which direction you might have caught it in the video that my arrows were going on my path. Uh, just the way that I made the path, um, he needs to uh, start over here facing this way and walk from left to right. So that's that's my big time error. You can see that it's a dotted line between, and I'll press tab to go back into object mode of the path. If I select uh, that bone, you can see a dotted line to the beginning of the path. That should have been my clue. So I'm gonna go back into object mode of the armature, and I'll press three to go to my side view. I'll grab it, I'll put it over there. I'll press RZ 180 to make him face um, 180 degrees on the z-axis so he's facing back in the correct um, direction. And then I'll move him to the beginning of the path. And I'm gonna rotate him on the z-axis a little bit better so he's facing the path. And now if I scrub through, you can see that he's walking along the path. That does not mean that he's taking the right number of steps though, and it doesn't mean he's quite exactly on it. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And if I scrub through, it looks like he's doing pretty well um, on that path, uh, pretty, pretty well. Um, if I go back to my side view, and I go back to the beginning and I scrub through. I'll put my 3D cursor at the beginning of his foot again. We want to test to see if he's sliding at all. And oh yes, is he ever sliding? But that actually might mean that we are not giving enough time for him to walk from point A to point B. And that's not determined with keyframes here. That's determined by the path object itself. If I select that path and then go over to the, what is it called? It's called the uh, object data tab for the uh, path object. You can see here that under path animation, it takes 100 frames for an object to go along here. That's how it's determined, not by keyframes anywhere. So if I change this number to the number I want, let's say I want 200, I can type that in and press enter. Evaluation time is a frame that I'm currently on. I'm not sure why it's called that. So now if I scrub through, it'll take my character 200 frames to get from point A uh, to point B. I currently don't have enough uh, repetitions of the walk cycle, um, but I'm more concerned about speed now. So I know I want it to take him 200 frames to do that. Um, how is it looking in terms of speed? I've got my 3D cursor there. Um, it's actually looking not too bad. It's sliding forward a little bit. And what that means, I think, is that we do not have enough repetitions, which means we're going too slowly. I hope I'm not backwards on that one. So I'm going to hold shift uh, with that strip, right click to select. Um, if I have it selected, then I can hold shift and just drag in there to make each strip a little bit shorter. And let's see how we're doing here. Uh, no, that's way too short. So now he's actually sliding backwards like he's on ice. So let's go ahead and hold shift and go back up to like 0.35 something. And that's looking pretty good to me. Yeah, pretty darn good. Uh, obviously, we're not going for long enough, though. He just slides down at the end. So I'm going to change my repeat value up to cover that whole 200 or so. 
uh, right about there. And let's go ahead and check that out. Oh, you know what? I have my timeline still limited to 79. I'll change it to 200 and I'll press enter. Let's go ahead and continue watching it. Okay, so we have our character walking from point A to point B on a path. We specified our own uh, duration of frames. We were then able to match our duration to our walk speed. Uh, we changed the duration of each step or each two steps, and then we repeated it the appropriate number of times. The cool thing about animating a character along a path is that you can actually go in later and edit your path so I can make him walk up a much uh, steeper hill or even a hill with bumps in it. I can move these things around and of course he'll just follow on his merry way. If you want him to not tilt around like he is right now, you can actually animate. I'll go ahead and press escape on my keyboard and go into pose mode of the armature. You can actually animate uh, this bone, its rotation on its own local um, axes with the local gizmo. You can rotate um, that bone like that. So if you wanna make him um, not tilt in the wrong way. That's basically what you can do, but I'm going to save that for a future video. But that will be it for this video. Uh, please don't forget to click that thumbs up button uh, below this video to like this video if you learned something. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos just like this one in Blender and in tech. Go ahead and check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash borncg. There I post previews of what I'm working on uh, next for future tutorials, and I ask questions to my viewers. But that will be it for this video. Uh, Thanks again for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.